Well, uh, today we have a fun one on That's Classic. Um, this is somebody that actually I've been trying to talk to for a few months here. And now it's it's just wonderful that we were able to connect. So today I have none other than um, the actress who played Ma Ingalls on Little House on the Prairie, Karen Grassley. So uh, Karen, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, John. Yeah, it's a real pleasure to have you on and uh I, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Little House, and I, I know a lot of, a lot of the uh, listeners are as well. So it's it's great to have you on the show. Um, so right out of the gates, I was curious, what are some of your uh, like either funniest or fondest memories looking back at like what was it nine seasons of Little House? For me, it was eight seasons. Eight. That's right. <clears throat> then they did a Little House and New Beginning. Right. With- Laura and Almanzo as the main couple. So um, one of my uh, fun memories of uh, Melissa Gilbert was the first time I met her. Uh, This was in in the mountains in Sonora here in Northern California. Yeah. And uh, it was our very first day we were going to shoot. And um, here came this little girl in her calico dress and her big jacket and her little braids because we were all dressed and ready. And uh, she said, do you have your tears ready? (laughs) And I was just speechless at first. I was like, oh my God, who is this kid? Wow. And I said, "Uh, yes, I have them in my apron pocket. So that was how we began. <laughs> and what, um, how quickly did you form a, you know, a, you know, some kind of a bond with Melissa, you know, outside of just the character? We formed a bond, all of us, the, well, the girls and I, on the pilot, because we were very isolated there. We were only working in location. We were all away from home. We were all doing something we had never done before. They, of course, were little little actresses. So Mm -hmm. uh, they had done a commercial or something like that or mm, a small bit in a movie of the week. But um, for me, I had never done a primetime television movie. So we were all new to everything. And we very much relied on each other. And it was kind of lovely because the crew was new to us. We were new to them. Michael was a wonderful leader. He was everywhere at once, on top of everything, knew exactly what he was going for, loved his crew, because he knew most of them already. Mm, interesting. And we had this great unit production manager who made sure that everything was there when it needed to be there and that everything happened when it was supposed to happen within the bounds, you know, of weather and things that you could. Yeah. Were, were you intimidated at all by, you know, the fact that it's Michael Landon? I mean, you know, obviously he's already at that point a legend, you know, in the business. What was that? I mean, honestly, was that a bit intimidating? Well, to tell you the the truth, I was kind of a snob. Mm -hmm. Um, I was from the theater. I had a head full of Shakespeare. In fact, the year before I was cast in Little House, I had been with a Shakespeare company in the countryside in England. Um, I didn't have that high regard for television. Mm. I had stopped watching television when I was in high school uh, because I found other things more interesting. So because of that, I only knew Mike through the times I visited my parents and watched him on Bonanza. Wow. And of course, I mean, he was so good looking. I mean, everybody had a crush on Michael, but 
but I was, I was in a different world. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 In fact, I when I first read the script, I didn't want to take the part. You didn't. It's it's. You would think for most people that you would think like at that time it was like, oh my god, this is the role of a lifetime. It was. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. I had my ideas about what I should be doing and I was flat broke job. So here I was, I really needed a job. I was ready to go back to school and leave show business altogether because wow. I I just had it, you know, I'd had enough and I was discouraged enough. And then here came this part. Well, I was thrilled that I would get to stay in show business but when I read the whole script I saw that here was the leading man handsome positive playing the violin making jokes with the girls and here was Ma frowning working hard saying negative things that's what it, that's what the script was like oh my gosh and I thought, ooh, I don't know about this part, you know. Um, this doesn't look like a part that's going to lead to other parts here. Um, so in the sense that Ma was scared, she was going into the unknown when he finally arrived at this place and looked out and said, we're home. She just looked out at this vast emptiness and was not thrilled, you know? Wow. So that's a, totally understandable once you get inside it, mm -hmm. you get behind what the character was going through, the terror of the Native Americans at the time was enormous. Sure, sure. So when I got into what this was really like for her, then my whole approach changed. I also read that you drew from your own mom for, for the character. Yeah, my very much based on my mother. My mother was born in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. My grandfather uh, was a sharecropping farmer. They moved to Idaho when my mother was just a toddler, like Carrie mm -hmm. in Little House. Mm -hmm. She went barefoot to school. She went to school on horseback. Um, they knew a kind of poverty that was beyond anything I could imagine. So my mother grew up with all these hardships and yet she had found a way to get an education, become a school teacher, and eventually become a businesswoman. Amazing. So, yeah, I had great regard uh, for her accomplishments. And she was tough, you know, and she was strict. And she was also very, very supportive of seeing that we got an education and that we were going to get ahead that we weren't going to be stuck that's it that's interesting i mean between drawing on 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 her background obviously with with the poverty and in idaho and then on top of it i i also had read that you were as a child you sang in a baptist choir which also i could see lending to that whole you know experience yeah yeah i was very much of um of a christian uh, during my growing up years, mm -hmm. um, my neighbors had taken me to Sunday school with them. And um, it was a Baptist church. And I just thought it was great. I mean, all that Bible stories and songs and memorize a Bible verse. I just thought this was great. And the teachers all liked me because I thought it was great. And um uh, my parents were not enthusiastic at all. 
they had been through the whole born again thing and they didn't have any truck with it. Mm -hmm. But I was saved. And uh, the poor things, I would come home and try to save them, you know. Oh, my gosh. I, you know, I have to say, though, it, you know, it's funny how life does this. But here you are, you, you can look at all that background with your mom, what you went through. And in a way, it gave you preparation for what would be a, a huge role in your life. I mean, it's just it's just crazy how that all came together. Yeah, I think it's very beautiful. We don't know so many times what we're doing mm -hmm. and how it's going to unfold and be of use in mm -hmm. not only to us, but, you know, to humanity. Right. And now I think that's that's the faith that I have, um, not of any particular religion or sect or anything like that, but just that, in fact, there is something beneficent working on in our lives and mm -hmm. um, it will work out. And yeah. I certainly wasn't like that in my years of, you know, my 20s, early 30s. What were you like? Depressed, serious, very serious artist. Hmm. Um, very uh, argumentative. I like to argue with people about subjects. Oh my gosh. And you you and, and I look at you now and you're a very calming presence. It's it's very, very interesting there. What hey, what was a typical day like on the set of Little House? Like, you know, I think people always think of, oh, I love that episode, or I love that episode. But what was a typical day like for you shooting? I mean, I, I got the impression. I, by the way, I had Allison Arngrim on a couple of times. I had Dean Butler on, and I know that it wasn't always um like, oh my gosh, it's just perfect weather out here. It was pretty hot out there sounds like it could be very very hot and it could be very very cold mm -hmm. um i write quite a bit about what the routine was like in my book um because i know people are very interested to know what was it like for us to be on mm -hmm. the set and be going through these days and for me, uh, it was kind of very fascinating because it was also new mm -hmm. um, and and physically so challenging. I mean, that first week, we had a heat wave. We were outside a lot. And I just thought, oh, dear, I don't know if I'll be able to do this job. This is so hard. Wow. Physically, really demanding. Well, I was usually the first actor to arrive because I had to have my hair set and dried and combed out and a false piece of hair attached. And um, makeup for me it was harder than for the little girls. Mm -hmm. So I usually had about an hour and a half um, before we started shooting, they had half an hour. Hmm. Mike, once we were rolling, he would be at the studio earlier, but he'd be over looking at dailies from the day before or listening to music. They were getting ready for the post-production, you know, so we had all these other responsibilities. And we would go 8 a.m. onto the set and do a rehearsal. Mike or the director would say, you're here, you're there, you're there. This is how we do it. Then you're going to go there and do that and blah, blah. And we'd go through that. Maybe we'd go through it again. Then we'd go off. The kids to school and me for them to go powder, powder, fix hair, or sit in my director's chair and read variety. Mm -hmm. 
and then be called in for camera rehearsal. And then we'd have that rehearsal and then they'd make corrections for lighting and whatever details needed to be corrected. And then we would shoot it and that's a print. And usually we didn't have very many tapes. Um, is that Mike? Was that Michael Landon's style more like one or two takes and let's move on? Uh, mm, I would say we were well prepared and his system of work was clear. And so, unless we had a problem uh, with a line or a light or the camera moving and jerking or a plane flying over, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we were we were pretty swift, and that was one of the reasons that people liked working on the crew of Little House mm. was because we moved along. We averaged about seven pages a day. Wow, wow, for a show like that, that is fantastic. It yeah. was when you consider the quality they were going for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would I would agree. Did um what is there an episode or two that stands out for you that you you kind of have always felt uh close you know to? Uh sure. Sure. Um of course the pilot is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Um and then after that, uh it was a thrill for me when they wrote School Mom and I got to leave the kitchen and go out and have a job and have some independence and carry a show. And that was a thrill, um, especially because uh, Dirk Blocker, who was Dan Blocker's son, wow, played the student that I become involved with in terms of trying to help him with his um, study problem, yeah. Interesting. I for, I didn't I didn't uh, I I actually never put that tie in together. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah, it was a very emotional thing for us on the set because you know Michael uh, was very very close with Dan. Yeah. The crew who'd been with Mike a long time, a lot of them were on that show. On um, Bonanza. Bonanza with those guys mm -hmm. and had a bond like a team you know mm -hmm. and when he was talking to me about bringing Dirk on to do this part he told me about when Dan died and he was crying and he said mm -hmm. that was why he wrote his first show was he wanted to write something about the grief that they were all feeling. And so he wrote um, this show in which little Joe falls in love and gets married and the wife dies. Oh my gosh. And it was a real tearjerker, I guess. So then of course the whole country on Sunday night, tuned in, mm -hmm. they were all able to cry together. Wow. Which was such a beautiful thing that Mike did. And this was, to me, his genius, was that he had this connection to his audience. It was like he had a thumb on the emotional pulse of the country. It was quite phenomenal how he could make these connections and they would be what the audience wanted to hear about. Consistently. Yeah, he was so consistent. What, um, and I, it, look, it, it, it's no great, uh, you know, secret out there that you had a, a, let's say an in interesting relationship with Michael Landon, because it sounds like, like you, you worked well together, but then there's the, the whole, um, uh, what was it? The pay increase 
situation that unfortunately it's kind of like that that's always in the air when it comes to little house like that there was an issue there with you and some of the other actors about being paid um you know what you felt you should get paid did what what, what was your relationship like with him our first year was uh fantastic you know it was just great um he was so happy with my work and I had so much regard for him as a director. And we frequently rewrote things together. And it was very creative. You did rewrite things together, huh? Because I, I I had heard he was very, you know, much about like wrote it, shot it, you know, kind of thing. But there was that involvement. Wow. Well, you know. We had a lot of hours where the children were gone home and we were still working. Mm -hmm. and, and I might have an idea about what Ma would do that's different than what somebody had written. Mm -hmm. And I would take it up with him. And then we would work that out. Yeah. Would so, you do any kind of improv at, at, at all between the two of you? Sure. And then we could shoot it because... Michael Landon didn't have to call upstairs to the office to get an okay on a script change. Mm -hmm. You know, we could figure it out and then we could go do it. So there was a lot of freedom and creativity there. And that was really, really nice. Yeah, so I never spoke about that uh, salary dispute until uh, last year when my book came out. And just so that everybody knows out there, it's called Bright Lights, Prairie Dust. Thank and you. Uh, yes, and we'll, we'll, yes, please go on. I just want to make sure that everybody knows the book. Thank you. Um, so when I was writing it, um, I came up against this thing uh, that happened. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I have to write about it. It's my story. But I had been so quiet about it during mm -hmm. um, the time we were on the air, because I, I just thought that if you are getting paid a salary and working with, with a company, you don't then go behind the company's back and say stuff. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but when it came to writing about my life, there was a different standard, you know? So I began to uh, write about it and I began to talk about it in a smaller circle um, because I, it, it was very um, emotional for me to break that silence. Sure. So what happened was that when I signed my contract for Little House, it was for seven years, Mm -hmm. And I said to my agent, these salaries look kind of low for television. And he said, don't worry about that. If the show's a hit, that will all be renegotiated. So when we were in the top 10, it was clear it was time to renegotiate. Of course. At the beginning of the second season, my attorney and I went to see Mike and then he kind of wouldn't talk about it. And then my attorney tried to handle it without me present and the network stonewalled him. And this went on actually and on and on. And my part started getting cut and my shots started getting cut. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. And then um, I was made fun of on the set. But, but wait, by Michael or by just... Yeah, by, by Mike. Yeah, this was all coming from him. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so it was so painful because mm -hmm. I had to go to work. I had to show up and do my best, but the atmosphere was so hard for me boy you didn't you did not show that on screen at all i mean i i i never noticed a change 
at all. So that shows, I mean, that shows the professionalism you have. That's, that's just uh, really, really something. So would it, would it be like a turn on, turn off? Like you would do the scene with them and then sometimes you would like become a different person basically during that time? I would become a different person? No, he would. He would become kind of a different type of personality. You know, he'd be on screen with you. He'd be, you know, plain, oh, yeah, plain his yeah. character, but then camera's off. He would. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's a, I, I give some good examples of that in my book. Um, and it was really a shame. It was such a shame because, you know, it was hard on everybody. I mean, the kids didn't really understand what was going on, but the crew sensed the tension. And um, finally, it was resolved. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how, but it took um, the better part of two seasons. Two seasons? Yeah. Oh, oh wow. And, and that's a long time. That was rough. Mm, boy, that that is, and I've heard other actors. And off the top of my my head, I can't th I think of the names, but I know that it was one of the male actors and one of the female act actresses that had also said that they were never like it was a it was they weren't paid what they were what they felt they should have been paid. Well, no, you see, and I don't know whether they looked at what happened to me when I tried to renegotiate and said well, I'm not going to go there. Mm -hmm. Or if their representatives tried to negotiate and ran into a brick wall. I don't mm -hmm. know. I because gotcha. this is one thing that actors, they don't talk about with each other. Yeah, I, I understand. I could see how that would be. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the guest stars that you had uh, that were on the show. I mean, the the famous one out of the gates for me, because I happen to be a big fan, is uh, Johnny Cash and June, June Carter Cash. I mean, I still love Johnny. But um, what was it like, which by, I believe I also read that you were a big fan. Um, what was it like to have somebody like that on the show? Uh, I mean, I, to be quite frank with you, I would have been in a little bit of awe. Oh, it was a thrill. I mean, I had been listening to Johnny Cash on the radio when I was a teenager. So mm -hmm. it was just a thrill to have them there. Um, and uh, and it was it was warm, you know, it was great. And uh, she was very approachable. Um, she told me this story about when their little boy got hurt in an accident on the ranch, huh. it was a very serious, serious accident. And they called her and she drove to wherever this was because they had a lot of acreage. Yeah, they, yes. And um, she said that all the way there, she was praying. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Because this was her practice, was to express gratitude for whatever was coming. Wow. I know. Wow. I mean, that's a heavy moment. It was enormously impressive to me. Hmm. Wow. Was... was um. Wow, that is that is very heavy. Was was Johnny? Uh, you know, I know they said they were very warm or whatever, but was he a very approachable kind of guy? I mean, or did he did, you, did he have any air or just normal guy? There was no arrogance there. Just he was there. He was happy to be working. Mike was great with him. You know, I mean, most of those guest stars who came to a Little House were very happy. What, do you remember any others that, that were on that you were kind of like, it was like, oh, how awesome is it that they're on the, on the set now? Oh, Patricia Neal. Oh. She Great. had an Academy Award when I was a young actress. So I was, I just thought her work was magical. 
Um, so that was um, quite an experience. Did you get to talk with her a little bit? Not really. Um, this was during my um, ostracized period. Mm. And um, I guess... I guess I let that affect me in a way where I kind of kept off to myself then. Gosh, what a shame. Oh my gosh. Who, who else, who else uh, was on that, you know, that you recall that it was, because I mean, it was just one of those shows, you know, yeah, I mean, we had the most famous people. I mean, um, Ray Bulger. Oh, wow. I Bud. remember that. Yeah, we had all these people. Incredible. Was Ray Bolger, was that kind of wild for you? Because, you know, obviously, let's see. I mean, you would have been pretty young with Wizard of Oz when that. I was, I was a little girl and I and I would go to it. You know, in those days, movies would come around like that. If they were a classic, they would come around once a year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was that kind I of would, fun? To, I would to go every that? time, every time. In fact, I watched it again recently. I was in a hotel in um, North Carolina and I was out on a book tour and I was feeling a little bereft and lonesome. And I put on the television and there was The Wizard of Oz. Mm. So I just watched it, it was so wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it's still as good as it ever was, without a doubt. It, it's just one of those shows. Um, so what about, uh, I, I mean, I've heard that uh, Gil Gerard was on. And I, I mean, come on, what's the true story there? What what happened? Did you, were because were, it sounds like you two, you know, were quite attracted to each other, you know? Well, we, had, we had a fling. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. What was it in Well, you know, we were both we were both uh nominally at least single. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Was it in media, you know, like you know how that is, like that electricity right away? Like oh that's that's how these kind of guys are. Guys like Gil, guys like Michael, you know, it's immediate with them. I mean, I remember the little girls when he came on the set. They were like, who's that? He's <laughs> <laughs> Buck Rogers. <laughs> you know? Wow. Well, he wasn't Buck Rogers yet. Right. Yeah, that's he right. He was just breaking in. And, uh, but he had that wonderful masculine attractiveness and charm. And uh, all the women sat right up. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic was um so did you did for you being on the show the, the amount of time that you were was it did it ever become like oh are we going to do another season or was it was it um something that you looked forward to you know on a weekly basis it changed from week to week month to month year to year you know um when we came to our sixth year, mm -hmm. the network came to us and said, we would like to negotiate with you for two more years. And we were only obliged to do one. Oh, wow. Because we had signed seven-year contracts. So there we were. I was looking forward to it ending. I wanted to do other parts and do other things. And there they were saying, you know what? We'll pay you a lot of money to come and do two more years. Yeah. And I just couldn't say no. Mm -hmm. So I did it. And I... At the same time, um, began to put more energy into other parts of my life. Hmm. So, like I had written that film in the early days, like around season three, I think it was, uh, Battered. 
Mm -hmm. And that was on the air, I don't know, season three or season four. So I became more interested in my writing. I became interested in dating, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, more going on. You, 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 you know, it's so funny because you are so identified with Little House, but you have so many, um, you know, so many different areas that you've been involved in. I, I saw, um, you know, that you were in Wyatt Earp with um, uh, Kevin Costner and Gene Hackman. I mean, which, by the way, I've always loved that film. Um, what was that like to work with uh, with both of them? Really, I mean, wow, I have to say, just. Wow. I mean, they, they are big stars, right? Big stars. And there's a reason. I mean, not that that just because somebody isn't a big star doesn't mean that they don't have a big talent. Because mm -hmm. everything, you know, all the stars have to come into alignment. But I was so impressed with Kevin Costner, first of all, because you could see that he wasn't just the leading man. He was uh, also producer. His eye was on everything the same way that Mike's eye would be on everything. Mm. He was so tuned in to the whole production. So very smart, you know, and I think one of the things that people sometimes, well, certainly bef before I went to Hollywood, I didn't know the people in Hollywood were so smart. Mm -hmm. I mean, the people creating this stuff can be just brilliant. Mm -hmm. And the effort it takes to bring all of those elements together and create a whole it sometimes looks so challenging that you wonder how anything ever gets completed in a good way yeah no uh, agreed you know, did, by the way you made me think um you know i did a lot of research and i was lo looking at different aspects i have to be honest i don't remember seeing what what was your initial audition like for little house i realized that you saw the script but what 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 happened like were you just were you brought in to read like with a lot of other actresses? What was that whole process? Well, I tell you, it was really bizarre. Um, my agent called me and said uh, they'd like to see you for this new series called Little House on the Prairie. And I thought, boy, that is a stupid name. <laughs> it sounds so saccharine. Um, he said, and it's going to be directed by Michael Landon, who's becoming a really good, good director. And I said, well, which one of the boys from Bonanza is he? <laughs> and, and of course, he was little Joe. Right. And then when it came time for me to go to the audition, I was extremely nervous, extremely nervous, because everything was on the line. I, I had a very short time left in Hollywood before I needed to pack it in. Wow. That's just something else. Yeah. So I was told don't wear any makeup and wear a dress. And this was because in those days, a lot of the gals were wearing, you know, little, tight jeans and midriff tops and false eyelashes and they couldn't see ma you know in these outfits yeah so i took um some of my tax return money and i went and got a dress i was so lucky with this dress it was just perfect it was like a very soft brown perfect I could totally see that. Whoa. Modest, but not too modest. So I go over to Paramount Studios and I go in the waiting room and there's nobody there. And I'm so used to going into these rooms where there are all these actresses 
who look a lot like me and we're all nervous and the tension is in the air. Oh yeah, totally. I know what you we're mean. looking at everybody else thinking, oh, mm -hmm. if I should have worn what she wore or whatever. <laughs> right. There's nobody, there's nothing, it's quiet. Wow. And then the casting director comes and gets me and takes me into this big office where there's Ed Friendly, the producer, Michael Landon, and they're over by the desk and the casting director introduces me and goes and sits on the couch. And I sit in a chair there right by the desk. And of course they say, you've been an actor, you so you know, John, what they say. Oh, yeah, I, I do. Tell us a little about yourself. <laughs> right, I knew it was coming, yeah. I, it's like, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> but that day for some reason I was in a really up mood and I wasn't able to tell a little about myself and tell it in a funny way about all the shows I'd been in that had closed and you know the breaks that hadn't worked out and wow wow and so we finished and I left. And before I got home, my agent was calling, saying they want you to go back to Paramount, pick up the sides, read tomorrow. And he said, Karen, I think we can get this one. Wow. Wow. So I went and I picked up two scenes and I went home and I went over and over and over and over them. And I went in the next day and... They brought me in and Mike asked me to sit on this big couch by the window and he was going to read with me. And he got down on the floor right beside me, looking right into my eyes. Oh my gosh. And I was like, keep my mind on the script. Keep my mind on what this character is doing. And we read the scene and he said, good. And then we read the next scene, and then he leapt off the floor, John, I kid you not, and said, send her to wardrobe. Oh, my gosh. That was it. What were, what, when he said that, when he said, send her to wardrobe, what, what went through you in that moment? I mean, seriously. I was stunned. I was stunned. I was like, you mean I got the part just like that? I couldn't say anything. And then there was this pause. And Ed Friendly said, <clears throat> Mike, could I speak to you for a moment? And I was like, uh-oh, he doesn't like me for the part. I wonder yeah. what's going on. So they're very nice. They say, cool, could you please wait across the hall? And they take me back across the hall. And I'm like, what's going on? Do I have it? Don't I have it? What is this? Oh my gosh, stress. Unbelievable. And they bring me back and they're very polite, very friendly. And they say, thank you so much for coming. And I'm like, what? You're kidding me. No. Oh, wow. Now I drive home again. The agent is calling. They want you to do a closed circuit interview for the executives in New York. The deal was that NBC was producing the show. So NBC needed to okay me because I had no name. Oh my gosh. They, they were like, Karen who? So Mike set this up for me to do this interview with him, just as if we were in a room. And they sent that closed circuit to New York. And then they said, okay, she can do it. Wow. It's a good story, isn't it? Oh my gosh. I mean, having an acting background myself, I'm sorry, but that's one of the best I've heard. I mean, talk about highly stressful situation and all these different levels wow wow karen that's just amazing did did um 
Wow. Did you, I hope you celebrated. <laughs> I mean, oh, we did. Champagne. Okay. Yeah, champagne. Called my friends in New York. I get to stay in show business. Yeah. And how, from that day when he, when you did the closed circuit, how soon after were you on the set of Little House? Um, 11 days. Okay, that's pretty fast. And that's pretty accurate, by the way, to 11 days. My gosh, I'm impressed. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to clear up. And then I, I did want to ask you about uh, uh, Broadway as well. But uh, Michael Landon, I just wanted to know, I've heard mixed things. I've heard that he did he did drink. And then I've heard other other comments as I've read that he drank. He wasn't necessarily an alcoholic what what was your take on that because i had heard he would have like a little something each day kind of thing well i am an alcoholic i'm sober mm -hmm. and um for a long time by the way too right yeah a very long time i got sober on little house oh wow, wow. yeah what yeah. season which season three. Oh wow wow by the way, congratulations, because that's nothing to take uh, lightly any day of the year. Thank you. Well, it's a great gift. Mm -hmm. So I don't uh, say this person is an alcoholic or that person is an alcoholic. Okay. I've been taught um, that people have to diagnose themselves as alcoholics. Um, but my experience of growing up with a father who was an alcoholic mm -hmm. and working with uh, people who uh, drank um, was that Mike drank. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Was it, a, was it like the daily, you know, everybody, especially during that time, by the way, I should say too, in a society, a lot of times, you know, have a drink each day kind of thing. Was that- No, his... no, no, no. We're talking vodka for breakfast. Okay, yeah. That's a little different. You know, you know what is astounding to me is how someone, because not to say that your your role was not demanding, but when you look at Michael Land and you say you're starring, producing, directing, writing, and you're drinking. It's like, it's like, how do you keep that energy level up and that level of creativity? I mean, it's honestly, that's a bit of a miracle in itself. It is really, it is. And he didn't eat right. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think it was a kind of uh, manic uh, energy, you know. Um, there's something about when you're in a kind of manic state, you know, and your hearing is very sharp and your mind works very quickly. And... Um, I think that he was in a creative state like that a lot of the time. Oh my gosh. And you, you were able to, in the end, uh, kind of have your, um, I don't know, for lack of a better term, like resolution with him right at the end of his yes. life, right? Uh, before, before he was diagnosed, thank God, I had written to him. I was living in New Mexico. And I wrote to him to just sort of caught him up on what was going on in my life and said, um, you know, how lucky I had been to be part of this show. And he wrote back right away and said a little note, um, give me a call be so we can talk about the old days before we both forget them. Oh my gosh, was that, I mean... Whoa, that's bizarre. I mean, it's wonderful, but it's just the timing of it. Yeah. So then I called him and we had a really nice visit. One to one. It was nothing about past. It was nothing about grudges. Who was right? Who was wrong? It was just two adults who basically respected and liked each other. It was really nice. And so I was very, very grateful. Wow. Wow. Thank goodness you reached out. I mean, that's to say the least. Yeah. Um, to go in a totally different direction, 
you worked with Gloria Swanson on Broadway. Yeah. I mean, and I got to tell you something. I literally, and I haven't released the interview yet. So if somebody's out there listening um, with Nancy Olson Livingston, who is the last surviving uh, cast member from Sunset Boulevard, oh, just right. spoke with her. literally just spoke with her. And then I found out that you were, as I knew we were doing the interview, I looked and I was like, oh my gosh, you worked with Gloria Swanson. Yeah. What was that like? Uh, uh, did you ever have any time with her offset to actually, you know? Well, this was a phenomenal uh, experience because she was such an enormous movie star. Oh. You know, and I had idolized her performance in Sunset Boulevard. I mean, I just thought this was magnificent, you know. And now here she was, old, like my age now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet and, she still had that quality, though. Oh, she was a star, boy. She was a grand dame. There was no fooling around. So when I auditioned to be the understudy for Butterflies Are Free. Wow, what a play. Yeah, I got the part and I had to go and have an interview with her. <laughs> Talk about intimidation. I'm sorry. I be I be sweating it out. I, yeah, I had to be I had to be okayed by her. Wow. So I went to the theater at the time they said, and she was in her dressing room, and they had me go in there, and there she was. It was Gloria Swanson, you know, dressed very elegantly. And uh, she asked me a few things about myself and I told her about my training and working in England. And she was suitably impressed that I could probably do this. And while I was there, her husband showed up with all these hat boxes and came in to show her how the hats had turned out. Oh my gosh. For me, this was such a lark, you know, the idea that she had these handmade hats that she was now going to try on and approve. And oh my God, I just... But at the same time, I was a little snot because I just thought she was terribly old fashioned in her acting. And, you know, I, w I was like, I am so she, I did do the performance quite a number of times. And she then would give me notes. She, wait, wait, she would give you notes? Gloria Swanson's giving you notes? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, she would give me notes. And I, <laughs> okay, but I. I didn't really take them. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, wow. Did you literally go, yeah, sure, sure. But they're probably good notes. That's what's funny. I don't know. But I had worked out, you know, what I was doing. Yeah. And the other thing was, you know, she was one of the first people to really eat health food and begin to educate people about poisons in our food. And in that part, I end the first act eating this apple. And then she makes her entrance, it's a big surprise. And after the curtain comes down, she comes over, she says, don't eat that apple. It's covered in poison. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I guess she would talk about way ahead of your time. Jeez. Yeah. That's something. Well, on, a, on another note, cause you've been so good and I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to keep you, but I, I give every one that's been on uh, the show at this point, I like one of two things. One, uh, my first thing is what charities are dear to you that you like, you know, you like people to know this means something to me. If you, you know, if you end up wanting to go look yourself, that's fine. But usually there's something like that. 
And also, you know, what you'd like to say to the fans. So first the charities and then the fans. Um, I'm very partial to Planned Parenthood, uh, particularly now when Planned Parenthood is under assault. Mm -hmm. Planned Parenthood, who gives health checkups to women who can't afford to go to an OBGYN privately, Planned Parenthood, who does breast checks, mm -hmm. Planned Parenthood, who treats minor vaginal infections. I mean, come on. Yeah. Women need this care. Mm -hmm. So Planned Parenthood. Um, then I would say Greenpeace. Always been one of mine. Yep. I don't know uh, if there's anybody young out there who's listening. I mean, please try to get us moving. I mean, I can't believe that we don't move more quickly to save the earth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so those are two. Those are the two. Yeah. And what, what about, uh, what would you say, uh, I guess, what would you say to your fans? Cause obviously you have, I mean, look, I say this and, you know, people always think I'm like, you know, times when I say something like this, like, oh, wow, is that sound like a bunch of like BS or whatever. But the truth is the Little House fans really, they are some of the like most devoted fans that I personally have seen in, in a lot of the shows that I, I talk about. And um, so what would you what would you say to your fans? Because there are quite a few. Well, I say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because. I learned this past year and a half since the book came out how this character imprinted herself on people's hearts and how I am the beneficiary of this love that people have for Ma, which I am so grateful for. It's, it's really very, very touching. Did you realize it, by the way, when the show was shooting? Or did it come on later? I didn't know. Wow. I knew, I knew we were a big hit. But I didn't know until this last year and a half what Ma meant to people. I am so thrilled that my work was able to come across that way. Wow. That's pretty amazing. And... Just so that everybody knows as we as we kind of end this, where can they get your book? And and also if you have any personal appearances that might be coming up, anything like that. Right. I don't have anything right now that's coming up. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a website. It's karengrasley.net. And on that website, you can find you know, the usual, you know, my resume. Um, you'll find my author page which tells you all the places you could get the book, um, which also has, um, oh, like a library of my YouTube uh, readings for children, uh, which is a fun thing I did during the pandemic. Yeah, your YouTube uh, channel, I saw that. Like story <laughs> time, story time or something, am I right? Yeah, yeah. story time with Karen. Because um, I felt like I needed to do something during the pandemic to contribute, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just sitting here at uh, home wasn't enough. I, I I understand that in essence, that's kind of how my show started. So yes, yeah. I do understand, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> well, fantastic. Um, well, listen, Karen, thanks a bunch. I mean, I really appreciate you. And, and uh, I, I thank you for your, you being so open and gracious. Uh, it was, it was really wonderful. So, uh, Anyway, I, I, I wish you the best, and I hope at some point I do see you at some kind of event or something. John, you made it a real pleasure. Thank you so much. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks again. Okay. Bye-bye. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so you're notified when I release my next episode. And remember some of the past episodes like Dean Butler fantastic interview. And Allison Arngram, there's four separate interview episodes of just that. Enjoy.